Welcome back to Great Day Houston. Our next guest feels no matter how you came into this world, you were made to flourish in life. Her newest book, Chasing Vines, examines how challenges are used to grow us when we learn how to lean on our higher power. Welcome New York Times bestselling author, Beth Moore. Hello, Beth. Such a pleasure. All right. Thank you for having me. You are so welcome. The first thing she said when I walked over was, oh, I want some of that popcorn. So I, listen, ask and you shall receive. Uh, I was sitting over here away from everyone. I thought, I'm going to miss my popcorn. No, you are not. Like <laughs> Thank I said, you. girl, you Thank ask you. and ye shall receive. Yes. Amen. <laughs> All right. Uh, Beth, New York Times bestselling author. So we know where you are, but let's find out where you came from. Yes. Uh, did you grow up in the church? Like a lot of us, I did. we were exposed to it. Uh, I certainly did. And I have to tell you, because I just think this is really fun for us and for all of us uh, Houstonians, I am a Houston yes, girl. Yes, yes. So I've lived here since my high school years. Say hello to everybody raised. who knows you. Yes, I just, I absolutely love the fact that it's my city that I get to be in the first day that this releases. Yes. So it's so, feels so right for me. Yes. I love that. Because you know but there's yes. somebody at home right now going, is that bad? I think that is. From high school? And all I have to do is I have just have to turn profile with this big hair and this nose and they go, that is bad. Well, that's totally Texas though too. <laughs> All right. So a lot of us grew up, you know, with our parents taking us to church. Yes. We, sometimes we would go screaming and, you know, kicking the yes. whole bit. Um, and then I think you, you kind of go because your parents tell you to. And then there's a moment in life where you go because you feel like you want and need absolutely. to. Absolutely. Do you remember it. that moment for oh, you? Oh, I absolutely do. I was raised so, so uh, grateful to God to be able to say this in the church. But I think maybe a lot of people can relate to the fact that my home life did not match who we became at church. Mm. So we were in a pretty unstable environment at home and in what a way? lot of things happening. Well, I come from a background where there was a lot of difficulty between my parents. Yeah. I come from a background of childhood abuse. We had a rough, rough time of it. It does not mean that I was not loved as well. Right. It just means that our Which sometimes home, can be even more confusing. Man, right? it is. It, it really is. But. I was raised in an environment where I was told about this one. That I could remember being a little bitty kid and they would just say, he's your best friend. It was always like, I have never even laid eyes on my best friend. But somehow that was exactly how I got through it. Then you get old enough to own it for yourself. Yeah. And they say your best friend, your best friend. Jesus. Yeah. I, that, that was, well, you know, to be taught that from the I, time you were I love how you were told. Kid. I was told, look, Jesus is your road dog. Yeah. If, if, yeah. If, if, if you are doing something and you're going out, you say, okay, Jesus, come on, we're doing yes. it. If you don't feel yes. like he needs to be with you, then you need to stop doing what you're doing. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. I just, I love that I have that heritage. And, uh, but when I got to be a young adult, I began studying uh, scripture and it was just, it was like a fish to water yeah. to me. Yeah. It was, it's my world. I've spent 35 years in a world of people that wear robes and sandals. I mean, my whole day I'll go <laughs> home, you know, afterwards and think I've got to completely realign to real life in 2020 because yeah. I've been all day in, in your, here, yes, 30, it's yes. Like, and let me clarify, I, I said Jesus is my road dog once before and somebody goes, that is so disrespectful. What I mean by road dog is that's, that's your best He's friend. That's with your me. buddy. That's the one Absolutely. who's not judging you, but the one who's gonna let you know when you're walking down a wrong path, <laughs> yes. right? So yes. let me just clarify for you. Yes. Okay, um, so the first time you had a New York Times bestselling book, what was that like? Well, it's just crazy. And one of the things that really helps you out that is uh, a safeguard to your mind that, that keeps you from ever being really full of yourself is it's been so much work up to then. Yeah. And when I And that look, wasn't necessarily your goal. Your goal was to help oh, people. Oh, absolutely. And this always, was kind of the side effect of always. it. Always. Yeah. Uh, from the time I was a little bitty girl, I, I want so much, this sounds so simple, but I want so much to to help somebody along their way. My, mm -hmm. my big thing is to see somebody get on their feet and then stay on their feet. That That is what is really thrilling to me. Yeah. So yes, that drives me constantly. Yeah. So if it is a help to somebody, that's, that is very satisfying. You founded Living Proof Ministries. Mm -hmm. um, Houston, and, Texas. Yes, yes, and you yes. recognize on TBN at teaching Bible courses. Uh, you, you do all kinds of, th of things like in the church, but then outside of the church, you're right, that's the great yes. thing about the book is yes. it goes everywhere. Right, and the, and the ministry is interdenominational. Mm -hmm. That was very important to us from the very beginning that we could 
could just embrace anyone who would let us serve him, would let us serve her, that we would have the joy of doing that. So yeah. it's our, our privilege. You start every book with a Bible concept that captivates yes. you. Because you know, so many times we'll just say things like, you should know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And that, but, but there's a whole lot Absolutely. more to any one of Absolutely. the lines it, it, that need to be explored. And so writing Chasing Vines, you know, the Bible is full of different, you know, uh, comparisons yes. to growth and plants and vines yes. and things. But you, all matter of metaphor. You were reminded of it. Yes. Uh, when you were on a trip. On a trip. I have two grown daughters that are my very best friends in all the world. Mm -hmm. And they also were raised in a household where every couple of weeks I got on an airplane on Friday night and mm -hmm. I came back on Saturday now, night. Now, were they your best friends when they were teenagers? No. Heaven no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I was just going to no. clarify for anyone who had Lord teenage daughters. Going, well, lucky her. Well, this is what you have to really, really <laughs> invest in. But th thankfully, so often this happens to be true. And so I had wanted all of these years, Deborah, I had been stocking up frequent flyer miles because I wanted it to come back to them for all the times they'd ever said bye to their mama mm -hmm. and I'd travel somewhere to speak. I wanted to tuck that away and have that come back at them. Yeah. So for years we planned this bucket list trip well, and trip. it was gonna be uh, Italy. We knew that pretty early on. Finally, after years of planning it, I wouldn't take anything for that because all the anticipation. Mm -hmm. We got on the plane and flew over 11 solid days of just touring different places in Italy, but one of the stops, and one I didn't even really think yeah. ahead. Were you drinking wine? You know what? We, I do have a daughter. I was just wondering. Like, no, you were taking is, communion. That's what you're doing. You're doing, yes, you're taking, yes, yes we yes. did take some communion, <laughs> yes. but I have a daughter that is quite knowledgeable about uh -huh. it. So the other two of us learned from her, and we did go to some tastings because this whole idea completely captured me. We stayed in a little inn, tiny little inn in rural Tuscany. And I, as far as I could see, hill after hill yeah. before me were, were vines and vineyards. Yeah. And it was at the very tail end of the harvesting season. So they were clipping the last clusters. And I just fell in love. And what did it for me, there's always this moment. We're talking about a moment that comes. Every single book I've ever written has come with a moment. And for me, this one was when our taxi driver was taking us into Siena. We were about 20 minutes out of Siena. She was taking us into the city and she loved, she said, I love having Americans because I can practice my English. So very, very thick Italian accent and uh, we just fell in love with her and she said this to me as we were driving through she adjusted her rearview mirror because she could tell yeah. I was glued to the yeah. windows and she said do you want me to tell you something about the grapes and I said yes and I wish I could do it in her accent because she said it so beautifully and it just dripped with romance she said the grapes she said the they, grapes. The grapes. She said, they love the rocky soil. <laughs> and I learned a concept that day. I mean, it had me. It was done. Yeah. So that, that, that led you to fruit, John 15. Yes, that that fruit comes from rocky soil. And don't we have some rocky soil? My soil has never been anything but rocky. And I thought, grape, that's my fruit. Yeah. I, thought, <laughs> I thought it was watermelon. So, and it's a grape. Here's the scripture. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Mm -hmm. He cuts off every branch in me that breaks, that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Even more fruitful. Yes. And then verse eight of that same chapter says, it is to your father's glory that you bear much fruit. And there's fruit, there's more fruit, and then there's much fruit. And it's talking about just increasing in our fruit bearing. And what became so fascinating to me is that truly anything, when you get your head wrapped around the concept that a, a stressed vine is what is going to bring forth the best wine. Right. And we think about the stress that we live in and all the, the rocks in our soil. And it's very, very imperfect conditions. And yet this is what brings right. forth And yet you have the to get fruit. rid of yeah. some things oh, yeah, for you it do. to blossom. There's right? a cutting it's away. It's interesting. We had a, a, our a gardener, uh, Randy Lemon, was on the show the other day. And, and he, he said over and over again, what you need to do with that plant is prune yes, it. Yes, you do. And then it will like just blossom in the spring. Yes, right? you do. So you, you can get rid of that, that yes. dead, dead stuff. But you want to hear something amazing because even the stuff that didn't work in our lives, yeah. Even the stuff that didn't come out well, 
when that is clipped away, I've been to vineyard after vineyard at yeah. this point so that I could do research. Those are dropped into the soil. So those really, those bad clusters that, man, that sure didn't turn out well. It could become well. your foundation of what, your it roadmap of right what not to do again, in right? your soil and fertilizes that ground yeah. and ends up nourishing that vine, there's no end to it. Yeah, the, I always the say metaphor your, your, never your breaks down. Greatest lessons come from your toughest times. It's the truth. And you know, because life is not always fun, but the thing of it is it can always be fruitful. Yeah. And then on the other side of that fruitfulness, there is some fun. There, there's some fun going, listen, that really should have destroyed me. And, and here I sit, I, I, I woke up this morning, you know, to be here early, I woke up at like 4.15 and I'd only had just a little bit of sleep, but I had this, this just, this joy just come over me and I got down immediately beside my bed on, on my knees and just, God, how have you taken such a train wreck? I'm, honestly, Deborah, my, my life story, it is just, I just went in and out of the ditch, yeah. just in and out of it. Yeah. And I think, how many books is this, Lord? And how have you done that? And all of this wreckage and in all of this uh, imperfection and all of these flaws, that's what he does. Yeah. And it's just, it was outrageous joy. Yeah, yeah. And it's that recognition and that you were able to make that power of choice. And I'm, I'm gonna end with, there was a group of elementary kids in a very tough part of town who were dealing with some really tough issues, yes. drugs all around the whole bit. And I asked the little kids, I said, who is the most powerful person in your life right now? And one of them says, our parents? And it's like, well, not necessarily. Our teacher? And then one uh, kid said, Jesus. And I said, even Jesus doesn't assume that you choose him. Yes. You have the power he to choose you. him, and then he opens that door. Yes. And that's not look, their eyes got wide, and he goes, Oh, I see how it works now. Yes. So, yeah, you are the most powerful person in your life. You can make choices. And then if you make that choice to have that person who you can lift it all up to and be your road dog, right? Mm -hmm. uh, be beside you, it can make all the difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I know y'all thinking you don't have to go to church on Sunday because you just had it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Beth, I just want to say thank you so much oh, for what you do pleasure. and thank you for sharing. Sometimes people like to present a whole nother life and that it's all been perfect. Mm -hmm. But when we know that you are more like us, right? We've all been through some yes, stuff, yes. but we can still get through some stuff. You better believe it. It has been a great pleasure. Yeah. Thank you very great much. Pleasure. And Thank welcome you. back home. All right. Beth Moore's book, Chasing Vines, is available for purchase online and where books are sold. For more information on Beth Moore and her ministry, we have a link on greatdayhouston.com. Now go ahead real quick. Say, say hello to everybody who's saying, hey, I remember Beth. I, I cannot tell you how great a pleasure it is to be able to say, hey, Houston, you are my <laughs> city and I love you so much. <laughs> All right, and everyone in today's audience is going home with a copy of Beth's book. That's right, so there we go.